strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our oh, God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Daily Devotion. We have been, for our Daily Devotion, looking at the Gospel of Matthew. And specifically, we started with the last part of Chapter 7, um, where Jesus says, The person that takes my teaching and puts them into practice is like somebody who was building a house and, and built it on a rock. So that uh, whenever any kind of weather would come against that house, whether it's storms, whatever the case may be, that the, the building itself withstood it. And as such, we went back and covered chapter 5, starting with the Beatitudes in chapter 6, um, going through his teaching and learning how to put it into practice. Let me say as we start this, his teaching is not a uh, uh, it's not legalism. They're not rules. They're aspects of the kingdom that we learn to live with and learn how to incorporate and eventually becomes our nature. As such, as we start our time together, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for transforming how we think, for transforming how we feel as well. The hope that you give us that transcends our circumstances and allows us to gr walk in a sense of confidence and hope, a sense of love, your love, that overcomes it all. And so as we hear your words today and go into your word today, may you continue to transform the way we think and feel that it may reflect your goodness and give glory to who you are. This we pray in Jesus' name, who is the one that dwells within us and is the life within us, the one who is transforming us by his spirit. And may we, with him, live as one. Amen. Okay, so we have been in the, the, the Gospel of Matthew. I'd like to... Um, 
start with chapter, well, let's see, let's start with chapter six. Continuing with the teaching, by the way, he started the teaching with chapter five. These are the Beatitudes, they're not rules. So when Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, he's not saying that um, being poor is a good thing, but he is pronouncing kingdom proclamation, saying that even though you may be poor, because of the kingdom and the access availability of the kingdom, you can now experience and you are going to be blessed through the kingdom. From there, he goes on to say, that you, meaning the disciples, are the light, salt of the earth. Meaning the truth regarding the kingdom will, as it lives in your life, affect everyone around you. Tox says that they're the light of the world, that they are bringing knowledge into the world, awareness of the kingdom. And then um, goes on to talk about the fulfillment of the law that Jesus did not come to give a new law, if you will, but to fulfill the law, which is an advancement, if you will, that was given to, to Israel of the kingdom. Um, then he talks about murder and anger. Talks about our sexuality uh, as well. Talks about divorce and our obligations. Then uh, he talks about keeping your oath and, and we are not to manipulate one another. And um, talks about an eye for an eye and that the um, the way of the world of if you, someone strikes you you strike them back for the, for the equivalent manner that that's going to be changed that there's a new dynamic in place regarding the kingdom of God that's actually by its very nature different than eye for eye tooth for tooth then he gets to love your enemies I think I'd like to start there it's the last teaching before we go into chapter 6 and he says in the chapter 5, verse 43, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now that's not in scripture at all. That is a Jewish uh, tradition or a Jewish saying or, a, or a, maybe not even a Jewish saying, but a cultural saying that was prominent during that time. He refers to it and then follows up by saying, but I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Key. Um, sons of the Father reflect the nature of the Father. And the nature that we have as human beings is to hate or to hold on to for, for, for right reason in many respects, um, an anger, or a justifiable reason, I should say, from a human perspective, an animosity towards one's enemies. If they have animosity towards us, we tend to have animosity towards them. And Jesus is saying, that's how the world works. That's how it's set up now. That's not how it is in the kingdom. The quality, the nature of a human being, the nature of God's very own presence is not one of hatred. Hatred is simply the desire to destroy. That's what hatred is. It is the, the intention of destroying. Love is the intention of good. Love is when you intend to do good. And so Jesus is saying, if you intend to destroy someone or to do harm is another way to put that. That's how the world works. But rather, if, if you have an enemy that intends to harm you, don't respond with the same intention to harm them. It doesn't, now again, it's not a law. These are not laws, they're not rules, they're aspects of the kingdom. That doesn't mean you simply roll over as a, um, as a, 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 a a map for someone to walk over. Well, unless God told you to for, for a particular pur purpose, but God <laughs> better be very clear with that. I was just, um, I, this calls to mind something that was kind of disturbing to me um, in terms of rules and regulations. If you, if you take the kingdom teachings and, and apply them as rules and regulations. I, I was watching, I was at home, I was watching a Dateline episode, and there was a woman who 
from all practical purposes, very involved in her church, loved God, really wanted to, uh, you know, desire to be a godly woman, etc. Got married early in life, got divorced, that didn't work out. She's very ambitious, very successful, and that was kind of a blemish in her mind on her, on her life. And then she met this guy on the internet, Christian, and guy in the end t turned out to kill her. But as she was in this relationship and as her husband was methodically cutting off all of her relationships, et cetera, et cetera, one of her friends invited her to a wedding and she said, let me ask my husband. She did ask her husband. Husband said no. And the woman in responding to her friend that invited her to the wedding said, no, I'm not allowed to go and I need to honor my husband. So in her mind, there was a legal requirement that she needed to do this to the extent that eventually that relationship was so um, toxic that he ended up killing her. But this is what can happen when we put Jesus' teaching in legalistic terms and not necessarily as aspects of the kingdom. It doesn't mean that you become, uh, um, for your enemies, um, a placemat that they can walk over. Or it doesn't mean that if someone, like for example, right before that, Jesus says, you've heard it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other. It's not a legalistic thing. It's a, it's a characteristic of the kingdom. Do not, if someone strikes you, don't immediately just repulsively or I'm sorry, responsibly, reactionarily, um, strike out. But take everything to God in prayer. Become the kind of people that doesn't live from this level of reaction, human reaction, but a greater level of the kingdom. When we bring it into, when we reduce it to legalisms, they do not serve the kingdom of God well. So, that's how... Um, in terms of, of, of loving your enemies, he says, but I tell you, love your enemy, pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. This is how good God is. God causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That word perfect is teleos. It means whole, complete, mature. It's not a legalistic term. It means to be in the same way that a son or a daughter reflects the nature of their parent to an extent. When they are fully mature, they fully um, represent the nature of their parents, if you will. Or to say, if you want to put it into the animal kingdom, if a dog has puppies, the puppies take on the nature of the dog, but it's not until they're fully mature that they fully take on the nature of that dog in its final form or it's in its mature form. Okay, chapter 6. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This has to do with, once again, doing things for the advancement of your own reputation. Reputation is something that as human beings we fight tooth and nail for. It is something that must be set aside with regards to the kingdom because it's not about reputation. It is about authentic goodness and it's about authentic trust in God. 
So Jesus was not concerned about his reputation. Only because he found his security, his purpose, his meaning in God. If we are trying to find our purpose, our meaning, our sense of belonging even, within others' opinions of ourself, our reputation, we will begin to serve the perception of our reputation rather than the truth of God. This is, this is probably one of the most profound teachings that Jesus... Now, Jesus uses the context of giving to the needy, um, which is a great context because how many times... Do we see celebrities say, okay, we want to give to the needy, and then, well, if everyone else is doing it, I should do it. Um, so giving, giving to the needy is something that is, can be an act that we use to boost our reputation over and above the intention of love. Remember, the intention of love is, or love rather, is the intent for good. It's not the intent to be seen. It is not the intent to um, be perceived by others as good. Uh, if anything, if uh, as Christians, the goodness that others may perceive in us all comes from God. And when we do baptisms and we give a candle to the parents, or if a person is adult and being baptized, we say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works, but glorify your God in heaven. So it's not like you're, again, it's not a rule. It's not like you can't do this in front of people, but the intention should be to always glorify God and to remove ourselves from trying to usurp the glory of God for our own benefit. Then he's going to talk about prayer and... Um, it's the same thing with prayer. He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in, in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I'm going to stop right there, and uh, we'll pick this up at a later time, because the prayer is so important um, as, as, as we learn to build Jesus' teaching about prayer uh, into our lives. Um, prayer, there's actually two things that really are the initial starting points of entering into the reality of the kingdom. One of those is prayer. The other is actually offering or giving your monetary um, gifts. And we'll talk about that more later too, but those are the two things that are the initial first steps of coming into the kingdom, and there's a reason for that, um, those two being the first. But we'll get that, we'll cover that tomorrow. In the meantime, Thank you for tuning in today, and I hope that uh, your day is blessed with the presence of God, that you become more aware of God's presence in your life and through you as his word continues to transform our minds. And uh, as such, let's close in prayer, shall we? Thank you, Father, for your word and for transforming our nature to be one of love and confidence and peace and trust in you. As we go through today, may your light shine in our lives, that they may see our good works and glorify you. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to uh, checking in tomorrow. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.